they stumble and fail. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war may rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord. the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle he shall hide me he shall set me high upon a rock. Now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Seek my face. My heart said, Your face, Lord, I will see. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me or forsake me, O God, of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. I said, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say.
the show. Say amen. How many glad you got a story? We come today to celebrate the life and legacy of Reverend Susan Cassandra Knight Brooks. A woman of God who has run her race has finished her course. All right, on behalf of the family, thank you for coming today and being a part of this celebration. We certainly come to celebrate her life. Isn't that right? Amen. She has made a mark in this world. Been a friend to many. Been a servant of God has done well. So we're here today to celebrate. Amen. So very happy to see all the ministers and pastors here. Thank you for being here today. We will follow the program as it is printed thus far. Make your way if there are any changes. We will have our Old Testament scripture reading by Reverend Carl Sims Brooks, who is currently the chairperson of the Deep River Scholarship Committee, a committee that Susan chaired for maybe 20 years or so. Following that, we will have the New Testament reading by Reverend Dr. Linda Smith, who is the director of the Minister's Relations Council of Deep River, a council that Reverend Susan served on for about 20 years, 30 years or so. Following that, we have the first vice moderator of the Deep River Association, Reverend Dr. Joshua Jones, to come and give us our prayer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. There's so much that can be said about Susan, but one thing I remember most about her is the power of friendship. She, she was truly a friend of mine. A friend who came into my life and a friend who I will never forget. I will be reading for your hearing Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, first through the eight verses. And I will be reading from the New King James Version. And it reads, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and, and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to gain and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. The word of God for the people of God. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I will be reading from 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, verses 13 through 18. And I will be reading from the New Living Translation. 
the hope of the resurrection. And now, brothers and sisters, I want you to know what will happen to the Christians who have died so you will not be full of sorrow like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus comes, God will bring back with Jesus all the Christians who have died. I can tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not rise to meet him ahead of those who are in their graves. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the call of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God first. All the Christians who have died will rise from their graves. Then, together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and remain with him forever. So comfort and encourage each other with these words, a word of the Lord for the people of God. Praise the Lord, everyone. Come on, let's put our hands together for the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, let us up this morning and start us on our way. We came to celebrate the life of our sister, Reverend Susan Knight Brooks. And I don't know about you, but God is great and he's greatly to be praised. I said he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. I'm so grateful for this opportunity to stand to Reverend Freeman, to family, we are praying for you, and on behalf of my wife, Reverend Denise, and the Roberts Chapel Church family, I want you to know that we are here for you, to Sister Louie and Reverend Spinks, who are members of our church, know that we are here for you, and uh, I thank God for Reverend Susan Knight Brooks, when I arrived at Roberts Chapel over eight years ago, she was the first moderator that I had the opportunity to encounter. And uh, what a sweet, what a kind, what a loving spirit. And uh, we served, of course, on the Ministry of Relations Council as well. And I'm so grateful for her life. Anytime I needed some consultation, I could go to her and she would give me guidance as the new guy on the block uh, back in those years. And so I'm so grateful for her what God has allowed me to experience as part of her life. So today we are here to celebrate. And I believe if she was still standing today, she would say, let's worship the Lord together in spirit and in truth. I believe she would say something like, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together because he alone is worthy and worthy to be praised. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come, Lord, with heavy hearts. Lord, we come to give you glory, honor, and praise for the life, Lord, of Reverend Susan Knight Brooks, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for how, Lord, you sent her down to this earth. That, Lord, that she, Lord Jesus, would be one of your forces, Lord, to share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ that souls will be won for the kingdom and lives will be changed. So even now, Lord, we lift up the family before you, Lord. Lord, even as their hearts are heavy, Lord, but your word tells us, Lord, that weeping may endure for a night, but joy shall come in the morning light. So Lord, help, Lord, in this time, Lord, of bereavement, Lord. Be the lifter of our heads, Lord. Lord, knowing, Lord, that you promised, Lord, that even in times like this, that you would never leave us nor forsake us. So we're counting on you, Lord, to be the family's strength, Lord.
that you will pull them close, Lord, and hold them like only you can, Lord. And even in the midnight hour, Lord, wipe tears from their eyes, Lord. But I'm so glad that we have a risen Savior that we can look to for all of our help. All of our help comes from you, Lord, the creator of heaven and earth, Lord. And we come today, Lord Jesus, that even in the midst, Lord, of heavy hearts, Lord, to lift you up that you may draw me in unto you today, Lord. So, Lord, I thank you that now, Lord, that even as she rests from her labor, Lord, that we that yet remain, Lord, can still go on to see what the end is going to be. So, Lord, long after the phone calls and long after the cards, Lord, on after the visitations, Lord, be there for the family, Reverend Brooks, Lord. Be there, Lord, in their midnight hour to let them know, Lord Jesus, that if they would just look to the hills, Lord, you would be there for them in the midnight hour. So, Lord, even now as I stand, Lord, I lift up, Lord, the man of the hour, Lord, Reverend Fuller, who would bring forth the word. The Lord, that you will use it, Lord, like never before, to bring forth a right now word, Lord. That even while we're at a homegoing celebration, Lord, there's somebody that needs to know Jesus. There's somebody, Lord, that needs a Savior, Lord. That even in the midst, Lord, of a homegoing ceremony, Lord, you can still heal and deliver and break chains, Lord, and set captives free. So, Holy Ghost, have your way in this place today. Move like only you can, Lord. And Lord, we'll give you glory for it, Lord. And we'll give you honor for it, Lord. Because you said if I be lifted up, she would draw all men unto you. So we give you glory to that, Lord. Lord, help, Lord. Lord, even, Lord, now, Lord, we bind the hand of the enemy. So that well after the service is over. The Lord, that when the weeping is done, joy will come in the morning light. To that, Lord, we speak that over the family. And we consider it done in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you to the participants that's far this time. See sister and feel his coats come. Look at the When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! I thank God for saving an old wretch like me. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I'm waiting on Susan over there casting and say, I got you. Because she's always playing jokes on people. Oh, I've learned how to live only. I've learned, I had to learn what it was to live
several acknowledgments, um, many, many, many. I um, have several resolutions. I will be reading two of them, and I will try to mention all that I can. Resolution of respect and memory of Reverend Susan Knight Brooks, former moderator of Deep River Missionary Baptist Association, whereas God has brought to a close the life of Reverend Susan Knight Brooks, the moderator and members of the Deep River Missionary Association feels that it is befitting to express our sympathy to the family during this time of bereavement. We commend to you him who knows best and will always be right. You have our sincere prayers, for as Reverend Susan Knight Brooks was a vibrant woman of God, she led the pathway for many to follow, being the first woman moderator of the Deep River Missionary Baptist Association. Her smile was contagious and lit up a smile on others' faces. She always had a way with words that were sweeter than honey to get you motivated. When in the presence of Reverend Susan Knight Brooks and her husband, Reverend Freeman Brooks, you were sure to get in a good laugh from the relationship they had. Whereas Reverend Susan Knight Brooks served in many, served in many capacities in the Deep River, to name a few, moderator and vice moderator of the Deep River Missionary Baptist Association, assistant associate pastor at First Baptist Pittsburgh and First Baptist Carthage, chairperson of the scholarship committee, chairperson of the Deep River Building Fund, etc. Whereas Reverend Susan loved to attend various events in and around the Deep River, one of her favorite was the Martin Luther King Jr. celebration hosted by the General Baptist State Convention of North Carolina and the General Baptist State Convention of North Carolina annual session. Reverend Susan Knight Brooks was a faithful and diligent worker for Christ. She supported and worked as long as her health allowed her. She was a true servant of God. Her presence and spirit certainly left a sweet, sustaining memory in our hearts. Be it resolved that we bow in humble no. submission to him who never makes a mistake and remind the family to be encouraged by remembering this poem. When I must leave you with a little, for a little while, please do not grieve and shed wild tears and hug your sorrows to you through the years. But start out bravely with a gallant smile like mine and for my sake and in my name. Live on and do all good things the same. Feed not your loneliness on empty days, but fill each waking hour in useful ways. Reach out your hands in comfort and in cheer, and in turn will comfort you and hold you near. 
and never, never be afraid to die for I am waiting for you in the sky. To the family we know, your loss is deep and your sorrow is great, but we want you to know that we share in your sorrow. But more importantly, we recognize that this is heaven's game, humbly submitted on the 26th on the 26th day of August, 2023, Deep River Missionary Baptist Association, Pastor Cicero Summers, moderator. North Carolina Annual Conference, Northern District, the Reverend Thomas O. Nixon, presiding elder, Friday, August 25th, 2023. To Reverend George M. Coates and family, it is with the spirit of him who loves us best, Jesus the Christ, that we, the Northern District family, join you today in spirit as you celebrate the life and witness of your aunt and loved one, Reverend Susan Knight Brooks. We thank God for the years. He allowed her to share her love, wisdom, talent, time and talents and you with you and so many. There was a time in the Apostle Paul's life when with resignation, he said in 2 Timothy 4, six through seven. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. During this time of bereavement, it is our prayer that you and your family will be comforted by your faith in God and his word. May God's peace be with you and your family today and always your servant in this his service. Thomas O. Nixon presiding elder. First Missionary Baptist Church, Carver, North Carolina. Resolution, in memory of Reverend Susan Knight Brooks. She was ours too. The, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing for which I want. He has made me lie down in green pastures. He has led me beside still waters. Thus my soul is full, refreshed and restored. He has led me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I know I now walk in the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil for he is always, he is, always has, and always will be with me. His rod and his staff do not sufficiently comfort my servant's heart. Goodness and mercy have followed me all the days of my life. And now that my earthly work and service here are done, I will dwell in the house of the Lord as a heavenly servant forever and ever, amen. We, the entire membership of First Missionary Baptist Church, extend to you our heartfelt sympathy in the loss of your loved one. Whereas Reverend, Reverend Brooks has been an active and loyal member of First Missionary Baptist Church, and whereas, whereas she has served faithfully as executive pastor, assistant pastor, Sunday school teacher, Bible study teacher, Bible study at 2 p.m. for the retirees, Bible study conference calls, she served in various ministries. We are placed in this world for a limited time. This world is not our home. We are just passing through on our way to our mansion with, that God has prepared for us. You be assured that your first missionary Baptist church family is here to support and pray for you and your family during these difficult times. We know that God will ease the pains for you as the days go by. Therefore, be it resolved. Although it's difficult today to see the sorrow to see the sorrow. May looking back in memories help comfort you tomorrow. God will surrender you, surround you with precious memories of your dear loved one. God said in his word, as a mother comfort her child, so will I comfort you. Be it further resolved, although no words can really help to ease the loss you bear, just know that you are very close to every thought and prayer. A copy of this resolution will be given to the family and a copy kept in our records. Humbly submitted this 26th day of August, 2023. Sandra Owens, clerk, Reverend John D. Fuller, Jr., pastor. Also, a resolution from First Calvary Missionary Baptist Church, a resolution from Pine Ridge Missionary Baptist Church, resolution from First Missionary Baptist Church of Pittsburgh. We're not able to read those. We have many cards from churches. Um, I'm going to mention the names and friends. All right, we have acknowledgments from First Missionary Baptist Church, Carthage. First Calvary Baptist Church, family, Sanford, 
Evans Chapel and Zion Church. Amen. Reverend Eugene State and Tells Chapel. Mount Olive Missionary Baptist Church, Trinity United Methodist Family. Um, this was Sanford Rehab. St. Mark Church Family. Mount Carmel Church Family. Emmanuel Church Family. Oak Grove Liberty. St. Andrew's Amy Zion Church Family. Edwards Grove. Obituaries, please. In love and memory of Reverend Susan Cassandra Knight Brooks, Saturday, August 26, 2023, 11 a.m., First Calvary Baptist Church, 20, 2040 Field Drive, Sanford, North Carolina. Reverend Dr. Thomas E. Smith, Pastor. Obituary. Reverend Susan Cassandra Knight Brooks, 73, of Sanford, North Carolina, transitioned into eternal rest on Friday, August 11, 2023, in Sanford Health and Rehabilitation. Reverend Knight Brooks was born in Lee County, North Carolina. She was the second of five children born to parents, Lonnie Knight Sr. and Patience Taylor Knight, and the first of three daughters. Her siblings included the oldest, Lonnie Knight Jr., Sisters Phyllis and Luann, and youngest brother Tony. Although born in Lee County, Susan's parents moved their family to Chatham County, North Carolina. The legacies of the Knight and Taylor families in Chatham would propel the young family toward forward over the years to meet their own challenges and attain goals. First Missionary Baptist Church of Pittsburgh, North Carolina, would be the family's church home for many years. Susan graduated from Horton High School in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. In June of 1967, she opted to go to the Job Corps in Illinois to earn an administrative credential. Susan would be employed by the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. She was hired by the School of Education, Department of Educational Leadership, in the position of administrative assistant. Susan would be instrumental over the years in assisting assistant faculty and students in attaining various leadership degrees and credentials. Susan Wood herself received the highest call to service available to humankind. She was called to the ministry of the Lord. On the, on the day Susan was to preach her initial sermon, the entire front pews were filled with the faculty and co-workers from the School of Education. At the end of this ser sermon, it was clear that she was on her true path and her road to ministry. Susan Wood enrolled in seminary in Shaw Divinity School at Shaw Divinity School, Master of Divinity to focus on specific aspects of the ministerial profession. Reverend Susan Knight met and met, fell in love with and married Reverend Freeman Marvin Brooks. They both concentrated on preaching the gospel in their respective congregations and became a powerful couple in the service of the Lord. Reverend Susan Knight Brooks served as assistant pastor to Reverend Lincoln Blandon at First Missionary Baptist Church in Carthage for many years. In later years, Dr. John Fuller Jr. will be called to pastor First Missionary Baptist Church during her tenure at First Missionary Baptist Carthage. She would serve as executive pastor, Sunday school teacher, Bible study leader for retirees, offering this ministry via conference call so that everyone seeking inclusion was able to participate in this Bible study conference call. Several other ministries she participated in included FMBC Chair, Autorical Preparation of the Youth, Easter and Christmas programs. She also served on the Black History Board, Old Fashioned, and Ministerial Alliance Vice President. Most notable in her ministries was her service as moderator of the Deep River Missionary Baptist Association. She served two terms, the first and only female moderator in the more in the more than a century of history of the Deep River Missionary Baptist Association. Reverend Knight Brooks also served as a scholarship committee, a committee established decades before to encourage academic excellence by association members seeking higher education. 
Reverend Susan Knight Brooks was fully committed to her service to the Lord. She and her husband, Freeman, were building in their food box delivery during COVID. Reverend Susan Knight Brooks was faithful in her service. Her all-encompassing love of the Lord gave her the strength she needed to serve in the many areas, arenas she was called to. Graceful in stature and lovely in countenance, she weathered life storms and answered its many calls, knowing when her tomorrow came, she would be ready. Reverend Susan Knight Brooks was preceded in death by her parents, Lonnie Knight Sr. and Patience Taylor Knight, and her oldest brother, Lonnie Knight Jr., Darcy. She leaves to cherish, cherish sweet memories of her husband, Freeman Marvin Brooks, stepdaughters, Marvina McCormick and Dolores Lee, both of Sanford, North Carolina, Sandra Edward Adams of Clayton, North Carolina, sisters Reverend Phyllis Knight Coates, and George, deceased of Greensboro, North Carolina, Luann Knight Spinks, Michael, and brother Tony Knight, and Ned of Graham, North Carolina, many nieces, nephews, cousins, friends, and co-workers will recall the joy of having shared their lives with Susie Q. Thank you for your patience, and I thank you for the family and acknowledgments again. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Owens, for sharing that. At this time, we will have reflections. Looks like the family didn't put no amount of time on this. But if you, if you happen to see me standing up, uh, that means you have gone past your privilege. <laughs> Amen. Uh, as we see listed on the program, we have uh, Reverend Dr. Ricky Banks, the President of our General Baptist State Convention, followed by Reverend Cicero Summers, the moderator of our association, and um, then we are followed by the Moore County Ministry Alliance, uh, Sister Patricia Brown, is she here? Yes. She's behind me, okay. And uh, then the former First Lady, uh, First Missionary Baptist Church Carthage, Sister Carolyn Blandy, and then from the family, Reverend Phyllis Coates. Uh, in that order. To Dr. Smith, and to our religious, Dr. Fuller. Moderator Summers, to my colleagues in ministry who share both the pulpit and the pew, and certainly to the family of the Reverend Susan Cassandra Knight Brooks. On behalf of the 60 associations, the 1,600 churches, and the 500,000 missionary Baptists throughout the state of North Carolina, uh, it is my joy and my privilege to come and to share reflections on our dear sister who meant so much to so many. You heard read earlier that she was a lover of the General Baptist State Convention of North Carolina, especially our annual session, as well as the MLK Memorial Banquet. So that when we heard of her departure and had transitioned out of this life, I immediately contacted Pastor Fuller and I wanted to know when the arrangements were so that we could push everything aside and come from Elizabeth City to this place to be a part of her homegoing celebration. She was so supportive of the convention and we wanted to make sure that we were here to celebrate with the family. Now that's my first minute. I'm gonna take two minutes. <laughs> so that because in our area they give you about two minutes. And then we'll take the extra minute that we
grace, didn't I? And so let me just say to the family that the Lord gave and the Lord taketh away. Comforting to know that if the Lord gave, he has the right to take away. Comforting to know that the Lord gave and when he takes away, he's a God who never makes a mistake. Comforting to know that the Lord gave and the Lord taketh away. So it is important for us as carriers of good news to remind you that in your hour of sorrow, bereavement, heartaches, and pain, understand where God taketh us to. The Lord gave. The Lord taketh away. But you must understand where he taketh us to. Rep. Susan Cassandra Knight Brooks uh, went home. Going home is not bad when you have somewhere to go. And so in order for this family to be comforted, it's good to know that God took her where she needed to be. My final 30 seconds, <laughs> where did it take us? If the Lord gave, and the Lord taketh away, isn't it good to know that he takes us to a place of no more sorrow? No more suffering. No more pain. No more heartache. No more headache. No more doctor visits. No more hospital. He takes away to us place where every day will be sun. Sabbath shall have no end. He takes us to a place where we'll never grow old. Takes us to a place where well, we have songs that the angels can't sing. We've been redeemed. We've been lost. And oh, I'm, I'm a trained preacher, so I know we have a eulogy, so let me just back off just a little bit. I tell you that some glad morning, when this life is over. All right, I'll stop. God bless you. God bless you, family. Because he gave and he taketh away. Yes, yes. Peace and blessings. Yes. Let the church say amen. amen. Let's say amen again. Give it honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. To uh, screen president, Brother Dr. Banks, to the honor of this great church, Brother yeah. Dr. Smith, yeah. to my pastor, Brother Full, to all the clergy, and to the family here today. I bring you greetings from our Lord and Savior. Yeah. And knowing that God is good. Yes. Uh, I just want to reflect on a couple of things in my seat. I remember uh, meeting Susan and she took my breath then and throughout the whole thing we had a great relationship. Uh, came a driver for her and sister. Uh, and they drove, uh, I drove them to the convention. Wow. We sit down, we had, we had a great time. We praised and talked about the Lord. And we had a great time. But you know when she got sick, that uh, 
One day she called me up. She said, Family Summers, the Lord is calling you home. Come on down here. I got down there and Susan was crying and everything. And, and the pastor was there and we were there. And we said, Susan, it's going to be all right. She said, well, the Lord is calling me home. He called me home. Getting ready to call me home. She we cried, we prayed. We left her. Next week she called me again. She said, come down here, I got something to tell you. The Lord told me, she said, he ain't called me home yet. <laughs> well, you got some more work for me to do. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I, I was praying, I told her, well, do, Susan, do the work the Lord got to you to do. But you know, I, I, I'm always stuck with this phrase that she always used to say. Pray ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Yes. Praise him in his throne of his power. Yes. Praise him for his mighty act. Yes. Praise him according to his exceedingly greatness. Yes. Praise him for the sound of the trumpet. Yes. Praise him for the sound of his heart. Yes. Praise him for the trumpet, trumpet and the dances. Yes. Praise him for the singing. Instrument and door. Praise him upon the symbols. Yes. Praise him upon the sounds. Let everything. Yes. Let everything. Yes. Let everything. Yes. Let everything yes. That has breath. Yes. Praise ye. Well, all do you ever please stand? All do you ever. You probably do you ever please stand. families, on behalf of the Ministerial Alliance of Moore County, our hearts were deeply saddened by the passing of Reverend Susan Knight Brooks. Our thoughts of sympathy and support surround you throughout this difficult time. Reverend Brooks was a faithful member of the Ministerial Alliance and served as chair chairperson for a few years until her health failed. As I reflect on her life, Reverend Brooks was a woman of faith who served the Lord with love and kindness. The life she lived was true and honest, always glad to meet as friends. She was the model of a true servant. She was strong, but not rude, kind, but not weak, bold, but not timid, proud, but not arrogant, a true leader, for God. When you complimented Reverend Brooks, her expression was, to God be the glory. Yes. To this end, I will say, to God be the glory for letting Reverend Susan Knight Brooks be a part of our lives in Moore County. Savior Jesus Christ, I thank the Lord for being here this day. Yes. I thank the Lord for knowing Reverend Brooks. Yes. Down through the years, and she was the uh, Reverend Landon first went to First Missionary Baptist Church in Carthage. He prayed. He said, Lord, please send somebody to help me out. Amen. And that person that he sent was Reverend Susan Knight Brooks. Amen. And when she came, he thanked the Lord for her being there. Yes. She didn't, wasn't only a associate pastor, but she was there for the family as well. Yes. And she had his back, and he had her back. Amen. And uh, 
She would preach two times out of the, out of the month, and she was just there. When he got sick, she was there. When, uh, when uh, she got sick, he was there. I mean, they were friends down through the years, and she was a friend to the family. And I can say a lot about her today, but she was with us over 20 years. And God it was good to us at First Baptist Church. And uh, I said, why can't I say this afternoon? And as I began to ponder, to see what I could say, because so many things that I knew. I thought about this song, Made the Worst from for made the worst I've done speak for me. And I think if, if Reverend Brooks was to stand up in this afternoon, she said, May the service she gave speak for her. The people she, she said, the life she lived, speak for others. And she said for her, she 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 I believe she would say, speak. May the people she touched yeah. speak for her. Amen. And I can go on and on. That's a famous song for man. And I believe that Reverend Brooks was a loving person. And as we look around this room, we can see all the folks that helped her. Amen. And I would say to you, if you are, if you know Reverend Brooks, she you do that she love people. And then um, I'm going to miss her because the last time I visited with her, she said to me, I said, I read books. She said, go ahead, child. And every time I would say something, she said, no, no, really, no, no, no. And uh, as she looked at the pictures of the family as they had grew, she would say to me, she said, Carol, they're growing up. I said, yes. I can't believe it. And um, what she would say, the last thing she said to me as I got ready to leave, I said, I'm coming back. What do you want me to bring you? She said, um, I don't know. I said, how about some fruit? She said, and, uh, what can you eat? She said, look at me. <laughs> can she tell I eat everything? <laughs> I said, okay, well, I'll be back. <laughs> and um, to the family, you have my full condolence. Yes. Because God was good to your sister. Oh, and he was good to Robin Blanner when they were serving together down to the years. It wasn't nothing that they had not tackle that they couldn't accomplish <laughs> through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Just remember that she loved you all. She loved her family and she loved her church family. So, you got something to look at. You got a role model. Look at her and know that she loved the Lord. And she day to day, I love the Lord. And I believe that if anybody made it in, it will be her. And they are rejoicing today. say, I'm back. <laughs> for those of you who didn't grow up with Susan, praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs> I, my, my sister was somebody, and I know her, and I teased her all the time, and we had, we had a lot of fun growing up, and we had a lot of fun um, eating ice cream off the top of the house. All that good stuff. We're from the country, and the country we have gone back to. And for all the nice things that you all have said about Susan, uh, you don't know half of the things that she did. When I was in school, I'd be hungry. I'd call Susan. She sent me a whole case of Viami sausages. <laughs> and you wonder why all of us got blood pressure problems. Uh, she sent me clothes that were too big, that she had, that she didn't want. But I took them anyway, because that was my sister. 
Uh, she loved all of us. Now, I'm going to tell the rest of the family, if you don't get a birthday card this year from me, it's because Susan is gone and she can't remind me. <laughs> don't forget Tony's birthday is next week. Don't forget Luann's birthday. Don't forget this person's birthday. This so if you don't get a card, don't blame me, blame Susan. She did not leave me a model to go by. But you're right, she loved her church. But Susan is the second of, of uh, our siblings to go home to be with the Lord. Each time we have lost one, I immediately recall how much we enjoyed each other growing up, and I'm never ready for the loss. Seems just a few years ago, we were just playing children. I'm still playing children. I don't want to get old, but I know I am. So she reminded me about two months ago, I was telling her about I'd fallen and all this other stuff. She said, well, food. And she said it just like that. You know you're old. <laughs> and you know what? It was on that week I realized I really am old. <laughs> talking about the people, I mean, I'm the people I used to talk about. They old. They don't know what they're talking about. Now people say that about me. She old. She doesn't know what she's talking about. So, I take solace in appreciating how much all my siblings mean to me. How much they have accomplished. And I look back over our lives. We were not poor. But we didn't have everything some of y'all had. We never stood in a food line because our parents grew the food. I give her, uh, Susan could make stuff out of nothing. And I'd look at her, I ain't eating that. They didn't leave her to cook food. She just throws some, I don't eat grits to this day because of Susan. But I do eat, as you can see. But one thing I felt that I have to do today, and it's not on my paper, I've been upset for the last couple of weeks. And I have to say to my Lord Almighty to forgive me for the upset things that have been going through my mind. I got to give it up. And if that, if, if that songwriter would say, if I have wounded any soul, forgive. Forgive me if I made something from you not to behold. Forgive me. Because I mean, some of y'all tell, I've been kind of mad, but forgive me. And I can't go any further without saying, forgive me. Reverend, uh, Reverend Smith, I got you, I, I felt you. I heard what you told me. I ain't gonna always listen to it, but I heard what you told me. <laughs> anyway, but, um, we live to serve each other, our brothers and sisters. And when one got sick, we all got called. We all came. If somebody's hurting, we hurt with them. But we held their backs. We kept them up. And when I was upset, I know one time I got upset with my husband, Susan, got in the car, drove down to Sanford, I mean, drove to Greensboro. No, she came to Charlotte. She said, George, have you hurt Phyllis in any way? He said, what you talking about? He said, <laughs> I said, oh, that was, that was, that was last week. <laughs> I said, we all right now. So she spent the night and said, don't miss me no more. <laughs> but we all love each other. And if there's anything that my family needs, just call us. And if there's anything uh, I need, I'll call you. And I'll start now. If you have $10,000, I'll take it right <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just being Susan. I mean, I'm being Phyllis. Uh, to my sister, rest in peace. Rest in peace. This was not your home to begin with. Our parents raised us up to be of good faith. They taught us to love and always respect those that did not respect you. To God be the glory, great things he has and shall do. Amen. Amen. Thank you to all of you. I didn't have to stand up for anybody. Amen. 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 Uh, after solo, Reverend 
John Fuller Jr. would come, who is the pastor of Reverend Susan, and bring to us what thus saith the Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, Sister Dorothy Matthews will come, and she will bring us that solo. And the next voice that you will hear following that will be the speaker of the eulogies for today. Praise the Lord, everybody. As it's already been said, let's give the Lord a hand praise. She's such a sweet lady. So I think in my heart that if she would have anything to say today, even though I mean, like they heard the preacher say, she was saying that the Lord was coming after her. But I believe she would say to you today, when you hear my home going, when you hear of my home going, don't you worry. Don't worry about me. When you hear 
this day that you ordained down through the years. Now, Lord, we come to celebrate, God. We come to celebrate this lady, God. This your servant, God. Now, Lord, I ask that you decrease the messenger, Lord. Lord, as this message tries to go forth. Lord, just have your way right now. Do what only you can do. Move like only you can move. Glory, thank you right now. And all God's people shout with me, amen. amen. Come on, amen. amen. Just give God some praise in this glory. Amen. To the Brooks Knight, Coach Spinks and Associate Families, we offer our condolences and know that we are praying with you and for you in this time of bereavement. Reverend Freeman Brooks, know we love you, sir. We love you, sir. And we are here for you. To Dr. Thomas Smith and the uh, First Cavalry family, thank y'all so much for your hospitality and your generosity. Thank you so much. To all these pastors and preachers, let me uh, recognize once again our uh, state president, Dr. Ricky Banks. Made his way all the way from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Amen. Amen. I ain't talking about no small trip. Amen. 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 But that is dedication. Amen. Once again, thank you, Dr. Banks, to our moderator, uh, Dr. Cicero Summers. Uh, thank you for your presence here today. Amen. Now, this is not a funeral. All right. If y'all came for a funeral, then you're in the wrong place. Right. Amen. This is not a funeral. Amen. Amen. Because we have come to celebrate. Amen. Y'all, I said we come to celebrate. Uh, we're going to celebrate the life of one of God's great servants. Amen. Amen. So if you came for a funeral, you in the wrong place. Amen. Let me commend Reverend Phyllis Coates on your due diligence. Can we give her a hand? I had her on my mind last night and I called her. Because everybody's been, uh, you know, calling and checking on everybody else. But I called her last night to see how she was doing. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And so she said, well, for love, we're going to get a chance to sit down and, and just talk after this is over. Amen. And I'm looking forward to that, Reverend Coates. While we mourn over Reverend Brooks' passing, we also rejoice that she has went from labor to reward. Y'all, I said she's, she's went from labor to reward. Now, now, those of you that know Reverend Brooks know that she was not long-winded. So, so to respect Reverend Brooks' memory, neither will I be. Is that all right? Amen. Now, the word eulogy means to speak well of. It means to speak well of. So, so that's what I'm going to try to do uh, for these next few minutes. Yes, I'm going to talk about my executive pastor. You're going to respond and we're going to celebrate this wonderful lady. Yes, so let me use this text for this celebration. Matthew uh, chapter 25, starting with verse 23. Very familiar scripture to where it says, His Lord said unto me, well done. That's enough. Well done. Reverend Susan Knight Brooks is the reason, yes, other than God's providential will, why I serve the disciples of First Missionary Baptist Church. Now, she wasn't perfect in human form, but she tried to live by what the scripture said in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9. Yes, he said unto me that my grace, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I would rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now, whenever she started taking sick of Dr. Banks, going from Central Carolina to the rehab center, she knew that she had some health issues. But like Job, Dr. Summers, she didn't mope, nor did she complain. 
Because her response to me would always be the same. She said, Pastor, I promised them a long time ago that I would trust them all the days of my life. Now, truth be told, sometimes, but truth be told, sometimes it was hard getting her on the phone at the rehab center. I mean, I would call all day, y'all. She'd never be in a room. They, they didn't know where Reverie Brooks was. But one day, the director stated to me that Reverend Brooks would be all over the center, witnessing to others. That was Reverend Susan Knight Brooks, y'all. She never forsaken opportunity to tell somebody about the goodness of the Lord. She was serious about kingdom work. That's who Reverend Susan Knight Brooks was. That old hymn says, but the old hymn says, may the work that I've done speak for me, Sister Black. Because she didn't have to be in the forefront because she was a leader by example. Yes, and if, yes, and if we ever needed to see, to witness what our servant looks like, then look no further than Reverend Susan Knight Brooks. Because she was always, she was always working for the master. She was a trailblazer making history being the first female moderator right here in the Deep River Association. Now that, now that was a great accomplishment. Just even at a time when, when I'm quite sure, Reverend Coates, that the status quo said otherwise. But she was serious about her God. Yeah. Serious about her family and serious about her church. Yeah. She never bad mouthed her pastor. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Yeah. She never criticized her pastor. She never carried any gossip. She never gave me any problems. She realized that her pastor was human too. So she not only loved her pastor, yeah. but she always kept her pastor lifted up in prayer. Yeah. Whatever needed to be done at or for, uh, for the church, Reverend Susan Knight Brooks was always at the front of the line. She encouraged not only her pastor, but her church. She could not wait to get to the house of the Lord. Because she loved First Missionary Baptist Church. You knew when Reverend Susan Knight Brooks was around. Because you could feel her presence. Because she had an aura all about her. Because whenever she came to church, she was there for one purpose. To worship. So she let her light shine all the time. Yes, I can hear Reverend Susan Knightbrook saying right now, did not our hearts burn? Amen. Now, Reverend Susan Knightbrook was one of my seasoned saints. And I love seasoned saints because of their wisdom and their knowledge. Because seasoned saints will keep you young. They'll keep you on your toes. Because in other words, they don't sugarcoat things. They don't tell you just how it is. She was a peacekeeper. Because in the, because in the church, Dr. Banks, we can uh, create a whole lot of mess. We keep a lot of unnecessary dysfunction going on in God's church. But Reverend Susan Knight Brooks was not about chaos with God's people, nor in God's church. I know I'm preaching, amen. Because even when she could sense that something was going on, that something seemed to be off, she called me and summoned me to 1406 Washington Avenue. 
Did y'all heard what I said? She didn't ask me, amen. She summoned me to 1406. Amen. We sit in her living room. We sit in the living room and she say, Pastor, tell me all about it. Yeah. And, and there it was, I would lay it all on the line. Wow. Yes. So after I was finished, she simply responded to me, don't you let nobody run you off. <laughs> then we start laughing. Yeah. That's the kind of person that Reverend Susan Knight Brooks was. Just our last conversation, our last visit together, she stated to me that she was ready to go home. Well. Now, Reverend Coates, I thought that she was uh, talking about Washington Avenue. And I simply said to Reverend Brooks, hopefully you'll be back there soon. But she quickly corrected me she, she corrected me and said, Pastor, I'm talking about my heavenly home. Yeah. Well, my brothers and sisters, on Friday the 11th, yeah. she took her rest. Yeah. She gained her wings. Yeah. The cares of this world were hers no more. Yeah. She had already started checking all boxes. Uh. Y'all are trying to close. She accepted Jesus Christ. Yeah. She yeah. loved and supported her family. Yeah. She yeah. poured her life in the first missionary Baptist church. Yeah. She yeah. led the Deep River Association. Yeah. She yeah. led the ministerial alliance. Yeah. She yeah. tried to love everybody. Yeah. She Try to treat uh, people right. Yeah. Check. Yeah. Make sure that a husband and family would be okay. Yeah. Check. Yeah. But there was one more box. Yeah. There was one more box, y'all. Yeah. That she could not check off. Yeah. Uh, because that box said, well done. Yeah. That good and thy faith. Checked that one off himself. Yes, and when God checked that box off, God said that all these years that you had some different ships, because you had some friendships, you've had some relationships. So we left Reverend Susan Knight Brooks by the hand. Ah, and God said to her, get ready. Get ready. Get ready to get on the home of gospel ship.
Thor, would you make your way on up here, sir? Her pastor, former church pastor from the First Missionary Baptist Church in Pittsburgh, Reverend Ned Thorpe, will do the committal. I'm going to ask all that's not in the family to please stand at this time. Our sincere prayer that you will continue to call this family 
that you would continue to visit this family, but more importantly, that you would continue to pray for this family. As the weeks and the months will be difficult ones for them, but for now it is your prayer that can reach them in their time of need. We'd like to say on behalf of not still my family and staff and to this great family, first of all, know that you love them. And as always, it is an honor and a privilege when a family chooses us at such a difficult time in their lives. This lady was very special to me, very special to our office. We loved her, her and Reverend Brooks. So it has been even a greater honor today for you to allow us not only to serve you, but to be participants in this service for her, for a great home going, for a great queen. But we thank you for that opportunity. We always pray that we have served you with dignity, respect, and the compassion that every family deserves at a time such as this. May God continue to bless all of you. Thank you. Father God, we give you glory and praise for who you are. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And all of God's people said, Amen. Remain in your seat as we process out at this time.